joining two capacitors. Today we get to look at what happens when we join two capacitors. The diagram on your screen is showing capacitor C1 and capacitor C2. When we close switch S, these two capacitors are joined together. Now, we may have a capacitor C1 having a certain amount of charge on its plates. We are having a capacitor C2 um, having a certain amount of charge as well. When we connect these two capacitors, if we are having a capacitor with a higher potential difference than the other, it means charge will flow flow from the plates that are having a higher potential difference towards the capacitor whose potential difference is low. And charge will stop flowing when the potential difference across these capacitors becomes the same. In other words, these two capacitors have been connected in parallel. They've been connected in parallel and when we connect them, charge will flow from a capacitor with a higher potential difference to a capacitor with a lower potential difference and when it, it, it so happens, it does so to the point that the potential difference across C1 and the potential difference across C2 becomes the same. So when that happens, charge stops flowing. Now, the final potential difference and the energy of each capacitor will be calculated. We shall calculate this in our worked example that we are about to do. But the, thing, the three things we should put in mind here are that one, that these capacitors, first of all, have been connected in power. And then the other issue we need to put in mind is that for this charge that has been flowing from one capacitor to the other to stop flowing, it would mean that the potential difference across this capacitor and the potential difference across that capacitor have been the same. In other words, what we are trying to say here is that uh, the charges flow so that they normalize the potential difference. Then also we'll be able to see that the energy that was stored initially and the energy that is stored after the two capacitors have been connected will be different. It will be less. Now why is that so? Because when this charge is flowing, for example, when charge is flowing from one capacitor to the other so that the potential difference across both capacitors is normalized, as that process is continuing, uh, some of the energy is dissipated as heat in these connecting wires. So that energy that is dissipated as heat in the connecting wires as charge is flowing is what is responsible for the decrease in stored energy after we connect the two capacitors. We we'll look at a worked example to demonstrate this further. A 5 microfarad capacitor X is charged by a 40 volt supply. It is then connected across an uncharged 20 microfarad capacitor Y. They're asking us to calculate the final potential difference across each, the final charge of each, and the initial and final energy. This is the capacitor we're talking about. It is having a capacitance of 5 microfarads. Now, a 5 microfarad capacitor X is charged by a 40 volt supply. So it means it has been charged by a 40 volt supply. And it is then connected across an uncharged 20 microfarad capacitor. So this is 5, five microfarads. It has been connected, charged by 40 volts. Now we are charging this capacitor we shall call C1. And we are connecting it to another uncharged 20 microfarad capacitor we shall call Y. So this thing was initially 5 microfarads and it's charged by 40 volt supply. So we'll call it, this is a 5 microfarad capacitor. It has been connected to an uncharged 20 microfarad capacitor. So this is the 20 microfarad farad capacitor. This is a 5 microfarad capacitor. It has been charged by a 40 volt supply. Now we get this 5 microfarad capacitor that has been charged. And we have connected it to a 20 microfarad capacitor, which is uncharged. So what happens? What happens is that charge will flow from this capacitor to this. And the reason as to why it will flow 
is so that the potential difference across this capacitor and that capacitor is normalized when the two potential differences now become the same then charge will stop flowing so now they are asking us to calculate the potential difference the final potential difference across each now we know that the final potential difference across this capacitor and that capacitor will be the same so we set out to start calculating it and so we get to work now for us to find the final potential difference we know that v is going to be equal to q over c so for us to find the potential difference the effective potential the potential difference across each capacitor we need to find the total charge in the whole circuit and we also need to find the effective capacitance in the whole circuit now remember we do not know the effective capacitance uh, do we do not know the charge the total charge in the system so before we find v we need to first find q we need to first find c but remember before this capacitor was connected to this one which is not charged this thing had been charged c1 had been charged by a 40 volt supply here so meaning that for us to find the total charge in this whole system we need to find the charge that is resident in the 5 microfarad capacitor when it had been charged by the 40 volt supply because it is this charge that was brought into this circuit with this not having any charge so since this didn't have any charge it means that the total charge in this whole circuit is the charge that had been charged by this 40 volts so to first find that charge we know q is going to be equal to cv so our capacitance here is 5 microfarad so it's 5 times 10 to the power negative 6 multiply that by the voltage that was charging which is 40 and we shall end up with 200 times 10 to the power negative 6 coulombs so I mean we have our value of q it is 200 times 10 to the power negative 6 coulombs so now we need to find the effective capacitance in the whole system now these are two capacitors in parallel since there are two capacitors in parallel it means the effective capacitance is going to be equal to effective capacitance will be this plus that so it's going to be c1 plus c2 and that's going to be 5 microcoulombs plus 20 microcoulombs and our answer here is simple it is going to be 25 micro it is microfarads so it's going to be 25 microfarads that's the effective capacitance so after finding the effective capacitance so we can go ahead and find the potential difference across each capacitor so the potential difference therefore across each capacitor is going to be the charge which we already got as 200 times 10 to the power negative 6 microcoulombs divide that by the 25 microcoulombs so it's 25 microcoulombs it's 25 times 10 to the power negative 6 it's microfarads i keep making that error so it's microfarads and here it is 200 times 10 to the power negative 6 coulombs and so meaning from there we shall get our final answer as 8 volts we have answered part A of the question the final pd across each so it means that when we connect those two the final potential difference across each capacitor is 8 volts so we'll go ahead and find the final charge on each capacitor so for us to calculate the final charge on each capacitor the final charge q we know that q is going to be the capacitance of each capacitor multiply that by the potential difference across across each capacitor we know that the potential difference across each capacitor is um, 8 volts and we know that each capacitor has got its own capacitance so to find the charge on each of them remember the charge redistributed itself in an effort to normalize the pd across each so q1 the charge across capacitor 1 we know that capacitor 1 has got 5 microcoulombs so it's going to be 5 microcoulombs multiply that by multiply that by the pd which is 8 and we'll end up with 40 microcoulombs then the charge across capacitor 2 which is is still going to be c times v the capacitance of that is 20 microcoulombs so it's going to be 20 
microcoulombs times 10 to the power negative 6 multiply that by the potential difference which is 8. Capacitance for C1 is 5 micro farads not micro coulombs like I, I had said earlier excuse me for that error. And we shall end up with 160 micro coulombs. And if you see, when we add up 160 micro coulombs plus 40 micro coulombs, it's going to give us um, 200 micro coulombs, which is the total charge in the whole system. So that is, we've answered Roman 2 of the question. Find the final charge on each. So Roman 3 of the question is requiring us to find the initial and final energies in the system, in the two capacitors that had been connected. Now we know that the initial energy, let's call that U, or the initial energy is the same as the work done. It is going to be equal to a half C V squared. We derived these equations in the previous tutorial. So initial energy is a half CV squared. Now the initial energy is the energy that was contained by that capacitor C1 which was charged. This one was uncharged so it didn't have any energy in it. This one had been charged by 40 volt supply. So that is, so we calculate the initial energy of that one. The initial energy is this that had been charged by the 40 volts. This capacitor that had been charged by the 40 volt supply. So the initial energy that was maintained here, contained here, which was brought into this system, which was when this capacitor was connected to this that had not been charged, is going to be equal to a half times the capacitance of that, which is 5 microfarads, 5 times 10 to the power negative 6. Multiply that by the voltage across the combination, which is 40. And... Uh, our initial energy there is going to be 4 times 10 to the power to the power negative 3 joules. That's our initial energy. Now let's calculate our final energy because the question is asking us to initial and final energies. So what is our final energy? Calculating our final energy means we are going to find the energy that is possessed by the first capacitor C1 when it had been connected plus energy in C2. So final energy is going to be a half times C1 V squared plus a half times C2 V squared. So that's going to be a half times our first capacitor which is that times 5 times 10 to the power negative 6 times V squared. The potential difference across this is Remember when we closed the potential difference, the, when charge flew, the potential difference across the two became 8 volts. So it's going to be times 8 squared plus a half times C2. C2 is 20 microfarads times 20 times 10 to the power negative 6 times 8 squared. So we'll end up with that total energy being 0.8 times 10 to the power negative 3 joules. So we have answered this question, the initial and final energies. If you look at our initial energy, it is 4 times 10 to the power negative 3 joules. Our final energy is 0 0.8 times 10 to the power negative 3 joules. Now why is it that our initial energy is higher than our final energy? At first, we got a 5 microfarad capacitor we charged it with a 40 volt source and it acquired when we charged it it acquired our initial energy which is 4 times 10 to the power negative 3 joules and now we get this 5 microfarad capacitor and we connect it to another capacitor which is a 20 microfarad capacitor but this 20 microfarad capacitor that we have connected to this capacitor was initially not charged meaning it didn't have any energy that it was storing so what happens? What happens is that charge flows from this capacitor to that capacitor until the potential difference across these two capacitors becomes the same. And when the, the potential difference across these two capacitors becomes the same, in our calculations we find that actually the potential difference now becomes 8 volts across that 
and it is also 8 volts across this. So when we go ahead and calculate for the final energy that is stored in this system, we find that the final energy is 0 0.8 times 10 to the power negative 3 joules, which is a bit less than the 4 times 10 which was initially there. So now the explanation for this is that the energy dissipated as heat in the connecting wires when the charges flow from the 5 microfarad capacitor to the 20 microfarad capacitor accounts for the decrease in the stored energy. Thanks for tuning in. For the benefit of your colleagues out there that would like to watch this tutorial, simply share this video. For Kisembo Academy, this is an old Ranga Kuramia.